Right, hi. Um, something a bit, well, it's not different, but you, I get a lot of good feedback when I, yesterday when I showed my cloth books and in the past when I've shown work that I've done, I get a lot of good feedback. So I thought I would show you this. And going forward, I'm going to be busy with my online class shortly. So I might not have a lot of new stuff for my blog. So I'm thinking, well, I've got years and years and years of embroidery here. I could perhaps do this kind of thing every so often because I don't want to stop doing the videos. The videos have been a huge hit. So this is a wrap. It's a wrapping cloth, okay? Made it, well, I've lived in this house five years and I think I made it three years minimum before I moved in this house. It's never been in the washing machine. I would never put it in the washing machine. It's never been laundered. Um, I actually have it draped over a console table thing in my hallway with a lamp on it. Um, so basically it was made in sections. So this, it's quite actually difficult to, to separate the sections at this stage, but probably this was made and then this was made and then this was made and then this was made and this and so on and then they were joined okay they were all joined and i don't know if you've never done one of my wrapping cloth classes but i mean just let me go back a bit so they're all don't measure them before i make them i just make them then i start joining them together and then at the end of the process i might feel fine sorry that i do need to measure because i need a little square six by six inches to fill a like space or something like eight by ten to fill a space so there's a bit on here somewhere just to see um, here so this was made to fill the space and this was made to fill the space as well so that's what happens that's how they come together now I absolutely I love making the panels and the, the squares and I love joining them together more because the seams give you an opportunity for more embellishment so here all these French knots here cross stitch here some rule all loops here rule all loops i haven't done rule all loops for ages you need to take volume because it's stressful turning it inside out this bit of patchwork was also made to fill the space um prairie points here chain stitch here and um, buttonhole stitch all these things for joining together so i'll just, uh, just cross stitch alphabet here that, do you know and another thing Looking at pieces like this reminds me, and cross stitch alphabets are, are wonderful and they're lovely filling, filling stitches, filling ideas and design. Um, over here, more rule loops, a lot of uh, vintage flouncing going on as well. Um, some Suffolk puffs on the edge actually, or well, Suffolk puffs along the edge, just along that edge. Um, so really what you've got here, you've got a mix of more, all traditional I guess, gingham and ticking, stripe ticking here, um, but vintage fabrics alongside more modern fabrics. Um, these here, these buttons, I'll have cut these off something that I bought, little tiny covered buttons. So it's good for me to get this out and to look at it and to think about it. Um, that cross stitch alphabet, it's really got me salivating, but here, like web stitches on the surface and then web stitches on the seam with the rural loops. Um, just let me go back to that. This is actually using up scraps of fabric that I painted years ago. I painted it for a module at university and I had some left over so with fabric paints, so I've used a bit of that in there. I often think to myself, Karen, paint some more fabric because it is a, a good way of getting unique fabric that you can't buy. See, that's another idea. So now I want to do a cross stitch alphabet and I want to paint some fabric. So might be a mistake taking this out. Um, so there's the cross stitch alphabet. I really like that actually. They're rule all loops, but they're, well, they're not actually the covered piping cord, but they're put in there like rule all loops. It must have been so thick to stitch through that. <coughs> I wonder if my fingers suffered. They probably did. So, and this is what I call my toe wrap, because when I was making it, I want to, when I get up in the morning and I sit on the sofa and I always sit with my feet under me, 
my legs under me if you can imagine what I mean and my feet were always cold so this used to be on my sofa to go over my feet in the morning so that's why I used to call it my toe wrap um, but yeah I, I actually well I'm looking at it and I'm glad I'm looking at it and I'm glad that I'm noticing all these things but I'm not glad because now I want to paint some fabric and I also want to do a cross stitch alphabet uh, and it's just backed with gingham and it's tied together tied oh no there it's not that's where the, the puffs are tied on there that's where those puffs are tied on the surface so it's not tied together but I would never it wouldn't go in the washing machine um, although do you know what might give it a more vintage look mightn't it if I put it in the washing machine should I put a pole out should this go in the washing machine yes or no on a gentle wash. I wouldn't iron it. I would never iron it because that would definitely wreck it. <coughs> Actually, I'd be interested to know your opinions on the washing machine. I am tempted now, I'm really so I'm tempted now to put it in the washer, do a cross stitch alphabet and paint on some fabric. As if I haven't got enough to do. Anyway, so you might find there's more of this going forward. Because I'm so involved in my class, or I will be when it starts, um, I won't have a lot of new stuff to show you. Uh, but I've, I could do this every day for a year. I've got so many things that I've made. And when I die, the sad thing is that when I die, my kids will just put them all in a skip. Oh, I say that, they go, no, we won't. Yeah, they will. Anyway, so that's today. That's a wrap, a tour wrap, my tour wrap.